I want to talk to you about a fundamental truth that can change everything in your life. If you really understand this principle, everything you've ever wanted will start to come to you. It's about breaking free from the patterns of your past and stepping into the potential of your future. Let's dive in and explore how you can make this shift. Every day, when we wake up, we often start by thinking about our problems. These problems are not just random thoughts. They are actually circuits in our brain. Each problem is connected to specific memories, people, and situations. These memories are not just fleeting images. They are deeply embedded in our brains, creating a record of our past experiences. When we start our day, we are often reliving these past memories and emotions. Our brain is essentially a record of the past. When we wake up and start thinking about our problems, we are automatically thinking in the past. Each of these memories carries an emotion, and emotions are the end product of past experiences. So the moment we recall those memories, we start to feel unhappy, sad, or even in pain. Our thoughts and feelings create our state of being, and if we start our day thinking about past problems, we are essentially living in the past. This is crucial because if your brain is a record of the past, your familiar past will soon become your predictable future. If you believe that your thoughts shape your destiny, but you can't think beyond how you feel, you're essentially stuck in a cycle where your emotions are controlling your thoughts. This means you'll continue to create the same life over and over again. Let's look at how this plays out in our daily lives. Most of us start our day in a very predictable way. The first thing many people do when they wake up is reach for their cell phone. They check their messages, emails, or social media. This habit gives them a quick sense of connection to their familiar world. It's like a comfort zone where they see updates and notifications from people and things they know. This helps them feel grounded and connected, but it also reinforces the same patterns and routines they've been following. After checking their phones, people usually follow a set daily routine. They get out of bed, often from the same side of the bed each morning, and go through a series of habitual actions. This might include having a cup of coffee, taking a shower, getting dressed, and then heading off to work. On the way to work, they might take the same route, pass by the same places, and see the same sights. At work, they interact with the same colleagues, deal with the same tasks, and follow the same procedures. This daily routine becomes a kind of program that we follow almost automatically. We don't usually think much about these actions because they've become so ingrained in our daily lives. It's like going on autopilot where our body and mind are operating based on established habits and patterns. Because these routines are so familiar, they don't require much conscious thought or effort. They become automatic and we follow them without much deliberation. For example, imagine you wake up every day at 6.30 a.m. and your first action is to check your phone. Then you make coffee and read the news while sitting at your kitchen table. After that, you get dressed in a specific order and drive the same route to work. Each of these steps is part of your daily program. Even the way you interact with people at work follows a predictable pattern. This routine can become so automatic that you might not even notice you're doing it. By the time we reach 35 years old, about 95% of who we are is a memorized set of behaviors, emotional reactions, and unconscious habits. These patterns function like a computer program running in the background. This means that even if we consciously want to make changes, like being healthier or happier, our subconscious programming can override our intentions. To break free from this cycle, we need to change our brain's operating system. This is where the analytical mind comes into play. The analytical mind separates our conscious thoughts from our subconscious programming. To access and change this programming, we need to get beyond the analytical mind. This is where practices like meditation become important. Through meditation, you can slow down your brain waves and enter a state where you can make significant changes. Most people only decide to change when faced with a crisis or trauma. 
a health scare, a loss, or a tragedy, but you don't have to wait for these moments to make a change. You can learn and transform in a state of joy and inspiration just as easily as in a state of pain and suffering. Many people spend a significant part of their lives living in survival mode, constantly anticipating the worst-case scenarios based on past experiences. This anticipation conditions their body to be in a state of fear, and they become addicted to the emotional rush of these fears. They use their problems to reaffirm their limitations, feeling something, even if it's negative, rather than feeling nothing. When people wonder why they keep falling back into their old habits and patterns, they often look to their past experiences for answers. They say things like, I keep doing this because of what happened to me before. But what's really going on is a bit deeper than just remembering past events. Every time someone thinks about an old event, their brain and body start reacting as if that event is happening all over again. Let's say you had a tough situation years ago, like a stressful job or a difficult relationship. If you keep thinking about that event, your brain and body respond in the same way they did back then. It's like a replay button that keeps pressing itself, making you feel the same emotions now as you did then. Here's why this happens. Your body is like a storage system for your past experiences. It doesn't just remember what happened, it also holds on to the feelings that came with those experiences. This means that when you recall a stressful event, your body starts to feel stressed again. It doesn't matter if the event happened years ago or if it's just something you're thinking about. The feelings you had in the past come rushing back as if you're living through them right now. Think of your body as a kind of unconscious mind. It's always working behind the scenes, reacting to whatever thoughts and feelings you're experiencing. When you think about a past event, your body doesn't know the difference between what's real and what's imagined. It responds to your thoughts as if they were real events happening in the present. So, if you're constantly worrying about a negative future scenario, your body reacts as though it's already happening. This means you start to feel anxious or stressed, even though nothing is actually going wrong at the moment. This automatic response is why it can be so hard to break free from old patterns. If you keep thinking about past problems or future worries, you're essentially setting yourself up to repeat the same emotional responses over and over. Your body gets used to these feelings, and they become a kind of default setting. This makes it really difficult to change your habits or feelings because you're always reacting based on the same old patterns. For example, if you had a bad experience with public speaking, you might continue to feel nervous every time you think about speaking in front of others. Your body remembers the fear and anxiety from the past, and it reacts as if you're about to face the same situation again. Even if you're in a different setting or the stakes are lower, your body doesn't know the difference. It just responds based on what it has learned from past experiences. To start changing this, you need to understand that your body and mind are deeply connected. The way you think and feel influences how your body reacts. If you want to change your patterns, you need to start by changing the thoughts and feelings you have about your past and your future. This means becoming aware of the old patterns and choosing to focus on more positive and supportive thoughts instead. Here's where understanding this principle becomes transformative. Your body and mind are deeply interconnected. If you want to change your life, you need to shift how you think and how you feel. You can't wait for external circumstances to change before you start feeling differently. Instead, you need to feel the emotions you want to experience as if they are already part of your life. So how do you make these changes? Start by taking some time out of your busy life. Turn off your cell phone, TV, and computer. Sit quietly and close your eyes. This is the first step. When you center yourself and focus on the present moment, you harness more energy to create the future you want. As you settle into the present moment, ask yourself what kind of future you want. What do you want to experience in your life? 
take the time to answer this question and begin to contemplate and think about the answer. This process changes your brain. It fires new sequences and patterns, which is the beginning of changing your mind. Next, decide on the emotions you want to feel in your future. Teach your body what these emotions will be like. Don't get up until you begin to feel those emotions genuinely. This step is crucial because you need to emotionally condition yourself to align with your future goals. Now rehearse in your mind who you want to be when you open your eyes. Think about the actions you need to take, the choices you need to make, and the steps you need to follow. Review these mental rehearsals repeatedly. The more you practice, the more your brain starts to map out this new reality. You must also decide what thoughts, behaviors, and emotions no longer belong in your future. Write down thoughts like, I can't, it's too hard, or I'll start tomorrow. Recognize the behaviors that hold you back, complaining, blaming, making excuses, and become conscious of them. Change them. To truly transform your life, it's essential to align your body with a new mindset. Let's break this down into simple steps so you can understand and apply it to your own life. First, think about what you want to achieve. Maybe you want to be wealthy, healthy, or successful. It's crucial to recognize that to achieve these goals, you need to change more than just your actions. You have to change your feelings and your emotional state as well. Your body needs to adapt to match the new reality you're working towards. If you want to become wealthy, for example, you can't keep feeling like you're poor or lacking. Feeling poor will only keep you stuck in a mindset of scarcity. Instead, you need to start feeling abundant even before you see the results. This means practicing gratitude for what you have and visualizing yourself as already being wealthy. Imagine how it feels to have financial freedom, how you would act, and how you would feel. Let those positive emotions become a part of your daily life. Similarly, if your goal is to be healthy, you can't hold on to feelings of insecurity or fear about your health. If you constantly worry about getting sick or feeling unwell, you're creating stress and negativity in your body. Instead, you should focus on feeling confident and strong. Visualize yourself in good health and feel the emotions of vitality and energy. Practice feeling positive and strong every day, even if you're not fully there yet. Your body will start to align with these new feelings and you'll be more likely to take actions that support your health. The key is to condition your body to match the emotions of your new goals. This means practicing feeling the way you want to feel, even if your current reality doesn't match it. For instance, if you're aiming for a new job or career, start by feeling successful and capable now. Imagine yourself succeeding in your new role and let those feelings of accomplishment and confidence fill you up. One way to do this is through regular practice. Spend a few minutes each day visualizing your desired outcome. Close your eyes and imagine living your ideal life. How does it feel? What are you doing? Let those feelings become real to you. This practice helps rewire your brain and body, aligning them with the reality you want to create. By following these steps every day, you begin to change your personality, which in turn changes your personal reality. Your personality is made up of how you think, act, and feel. Changing any one of these elements changes your life. The key takeaway is that you have the power to create your future by changing your thoughts, emotions, and actions. The future is not something to be predicted, but something to be created. When you understand this principle and apply it consistently, everything you desire will come to you. Four, you shut the alarm clock off with the same finger, you slip into your favorite slippers, you shuffle into the bathroom and you use the toilet like you always do, then you walk over to the mirror and you look at yourself to remember who you are, then you get into the shower and you wash yourself in the same routine way, 
Then you groom yourself to look like everybody expects you to look. Then you go downstairs and you drink coffee out of your favorite mug. Then you drive to work the same way as you did the day before. You see the same people that push the same emotional buttons. You do the exact thing that you know how to do, and you memorize and can do so well that you're an expert at. Then you hurry up and rush home so you can hurry up and check your emails, so you can hurry up and go to bed, so you can hurry up and do it all over again. Now here's my question, did your brain change at all that day? We could say that you were thinking the same thoughts, performing the same actions that create the same experiences, that produce the same emotions, but secretly expecting something to change in your life. So then, as the environment turns on different circuits in your brain, you begin to think equal to your environment. As you see the same people and go to the same places and do the same things at the same time, it's the external environment that's turning on different circuits in your brain, causing you to think equal to everything that you know. And as long as you think equal to everything that's familiar and known to you, what do you keep creating more of? Same life. The same laws still applying to you. You're just thinking equal to everything that you know, and you keep creating more of the same. To change, to truly change, is to think greater than your environment. And every great person in history knew this, whether it was William Wallace or Mahatma Gandhi or Martin Luther King or Queen Elizabeth I or Joan of Arc. They all had a vision. They all had an idea, couldn't see it, couldn't smell it, couldn't taste it couldn't feel it. It was alive in their mind. It was so alive in their mind that they began to live as if that reality was actually happening now. So can you believe in a future that you can't see or experience with your senses yet, but you've thought about enough times in your mind that your brain is literally changed to look like the event has already happened? Neuroscience says it's absolutely possible. Now your personality, your personality creates your personal reality. That's it, it's that simple. And your personality is made up of how you think, how you act, and how you feel. So the present personality who's sitting here today, you, has created the present personal reality called your life. Now we're talking about innovation. Now once the idea comes, the next step is that you have to take action. Now that means that you have to be willing to step into the unknown. It means that you have to step outside the familiar self. When we begin to get creative, something unusual happens. We stop living by those survival emotions. Those survival emotions alter our perception and cause us to look at the future through the lens of the past. So there is this kind of model that says, here's the old self and here's the new self and there's a gap between the two. And when we no longer think, act and feel in the same way, all of a sudden we start to feel uncomfortable. We start to feel unfamiliar. It starts to become unknown to us. And most people, the moment they step outside of the old self because they're no longer making the same choice, they don't feel like themselves any longer. So the first thing they do is they make the same choices that produce the same behaviors that create the same experiences that produce the same emotions and they say this feels comfortable or it feels familiar the person the maverick who's willing to step out into the unknown that unknown is the perfect place to create from because only in the unknown can you create something new and if you and I can become comfortable in that unknown place then the best way to predict the future is to create it Teach your body emotionally what that future feels like before it happens. Now why? Well, the stronger the emotion you feel from the future you're creating, the more you're going to pay attention to the pictures in your mind and you're going to begin to remember your future. And biologically, it's the same as remembering your past. So then you have to stay in the feeling of that future in order for you to be aligned to that destiny. When people start crossing the river of change from the old self to the new self because they're no longer thinking, acting, and feeling in the same way, there is literally a biological, a neurological, a genetic, a chemical death of the old self. And this dark night of the soul, this unfamiliar place, is the true value, the true step towards developing a new self. And then if you can teach your body emotionally what the future will feel like, that means that you're not going to wait for your wealth to feel abundant 
or your success to feel empowered or your new relationship to feel love. In fact, the moment you start feeling abundant, you're generating wealth. The moment you start embracing empowerment, you're stepping towards your success. If you get up from a creative process and you feel grateful, you feel a love for life, you feel a joy for existence, you feel a passion for the moment, you will not be looking for your future because you'll feel like it's already happened. When you get to that moment where you have that feeling, that's your compass because that feeling is going to drive your behaviors. It's going to drive more of those thoughts. And when you feel that feeling and it's visceral, no person, no thing, no experience will stand in the way between you and that vision. And you will be initiated by the universe into wealth. Thoughts are the electrical charge in the quantum field and feelings produce a magnetic charge in the quantum field. And how you think and how you feel broadcasts electromagnetic energy that influences every single atom in your life. The thought sends the signal out and the feeling draws the experience back to you. My daughter probably is really the greatest creator I've ever come across in my life. My daughter was 15 years old and it was the summertime and she sat down with me and she just, by the way, had finished her last creation, which was acting in a music video that she created that became number one in the United States on the charts. So she was with me in the summer and I said, so Gigi, what do you want to work on next? What do you want to work on? And now she's 15 years old, so you can imagine. She said, I want an unlimited shopping spree. Now, what am I going to say to her? No, I said, okay, here's the deal. You got to practice this every day, and I want you to get very clear on your mind on what it would be like to have the most amazing shopping spree of your life. But you can't get up as the same person who sat down in your meditation. You have to get up like you just had the most amazing shopping spree and you shopped your brains out. And what do you think she said? No problem, Daddy. And so it was the summertime, and in the summertime, children love their freedom. But she worked with me, and I wake up at 4.30 in the morning, and I do my meditation, and then I'm waiting for her, you know, and I hear the alarm clock. I hear a ruffle, you know, rustle around in there, and then I hear her settle down, and I wait. And, you know, 30 minutes later, boom, the door opens up, and I look at her, and I go, how was it? She said, I don't know. And I said, you have to recondition your body into believing that that future event is happening to you now because your body is the unconscious mind, does not know the difference between an actual experience that produces an emotion, an emotion that you fabricate by thought alone. And you have to change the circuitry in your brain neurologically to look like the event has happened then you have to emotionally condition your body into believing that future event is already done. And when your thoughts and feelings are aligned, when your mind and body are working together, you're headed for a new destiny. Now there were some mornings she didn't want to do it, but I kind of knocked on her door and I said, hey, come on, I did mine. You're going to do yours? And I got down on her level and I let her know that I had completed mine and I asked her to complete hers. Now I was in Washington, D.C. I'll never forget this. I was driving in the cab getting ready to do this lecture and the phone rings and it's my daughter on the phone. Now I can't tell if she's laughing or she's crying, but she's altered in some way. And I say, what, what, what? Oh, you know that unlimited shopping spree? It happened today. I said, really? Tell me everything. Don't leave anything out. She said, okay. And she was visiting a friend of hers in Santa Monica, California. I live in the Pacific Northwest in Seattle. And she said, okay, dad, I went to my favorite store and my buddy and I were, you know, rifling through the racks. You know how kids do that. And she said, all of a sudden, this guy walks up to us, my friend and I, and says to my friend, hey, is your father Sam Borelli? And the young girl says, yeah, that's my dad. He said, okay, you two come with me. And he says, listen, your dad did me a major favor six months ago, and I've been trying to figure out a way to pay him back. And so he reaches into his pocket and he pulls out the company credit card and he said, ladies, have a nice afternoon. The cab pulls over on the side of the road and I say to my daughter, how much did you spend? She said, I spent $7,500 today, dad. I said, do you feel guilty about that? She said, nope. And I said, never feel guilty for anything you do, good or bad. 
And so I said, look, I gotta go. I'm going to call you on my way back to the airport on Sunday. Congratulations. What is gratitude? The emotional signature of gratitude means the event has already occurred. It's not just feeling the gratitude because we know that just having an elevated emotion doesn't affect matter. We know that just a clear intention of seeing something change doesn't affect matter. They've done experiments on this. You have to combine then the clear intention with the elevated emotion. The emotion is the energy, the frequency, the carrier of the thought. The thought is the is the intent. It is the direction. It is the specific field frequency. So it's like tuning a radio dial. So if it's all about vibration, it's all about energy. When there's a vibrational match between your energy and that in that potential that exists in the quantum field, when there's a vibrational match, it's going to find you. And if you can hold on to that emotional state of gratitude, your body is living in that future, in the present moment. And that's when we begin to see the miracles happen. Getting people to go from the old self to the new self is literally crossing that river. And if you know that there's another side to the river and you have the passion, the intensity and the will to keep going and get beyond your emotions, get beyond your habits of thought, get behind your unconscious states of mind and body, and you keep moving across that river sooner or later, you are going to break free from the chains of the past. And when you do, you're going to liberate a whole lot of energy and that energy you're going to use to design a new destiny. The quantum model of reality tells us that all possibilities exist in the present moment. So you have to get to the present moment in order to create. When that person reaches that elegant present moment, the moment they do that, they become nobody. They become no one. They become no thing, nowhere in no time. That's the moment they become pure consciousness. That's the moment they are literally walking through the door into the quantum field. Now you can't walk through the door into the quantum field as a somebody. You got to walk through the door as a nobody. That means in order for you to heal your body, you got to get beyond your body. You got to forget about your body in order for you to change some aspect of your personality. You got to get beyond your personality. You have to become no one in order for you to create something new in your environment. You got to get beyond your association to your environment in order for you to create something out of nowhere. You have to get to nowhere. And if you want to literally create some new future time, you have to get beyond time. And the moment our students do this, there's this magical thing that we see happen over and over again. It's becoming redundant now. It's becoming a pattern. All of a sudden, the moment they do that, their consciousness begins to merge with that greater consciousness. And all of a sudden, the brain starts to fire in holism. The left side of the brain fires to the right side. It works in synchrony. So like this massive whole brain state, at the same exact time, the heart moves into a state of organization and coherence. And if you look at the map on the computer and we have the student hooked up to the heart monitor and the brain monitor, we can turn around and look at that person and they have tears of joy rolling down their face. They are so whole. They are so happy that it's impossible to want in that moment because how could you want when you're whole? And that's the moment the miracle happens. There's nothing that you have to do because when you're living in survival, you're living in stress. Emotions of anger and aggression and hatred and anger and anger. Emotions of anger and aggression and hatred and judgment and fear and anxiety and guilt and shame, depression, unworthiness, they're all created by those hormones. When you're living by those hormones, you're always going to try to force an outcome, control an outcome. You're always going to try to predict how it's going to happen. You're going to get in your own way. The quantum model of reality actually then creates an energetic field so that instead of you going out there and getting it and it takes time, you are collapsing time and space and it is being drawn to you 
and we talk about that in our work, the difference between third dimensional creation and fifth dimensional creation. Third dimensional creation takes time. You gotta get your body up, you gotta go somewhere. You want a new house, you gotta go, you know, look at a bunch of houses, get a loan, pay it off in 30 years. You want a new job, you gotta go 25 interviews, you get a job. It's not quite the job you want. You know, you want a new relationship. You go on Match.com, you look at 40, 50 different people. You go on all these dates, it takes time. But in fifth dimensional creation, you're not going anywhere to get it. You are actually drawing it. You are the vortex that's collapsing time and space, and it's your energy that's bringing it to you. Now that then begins to become the excitement, because now you're no longer trying to control.